What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. We're back. We have more off-season content because we are the content boys. We are working to save the franchise by trading one of the defensemen for William Nylander. Hey, he makes half the money of them uh, and is also really good. So uh, the Leafs are going to do something stupid, and I would like the Sharks to be on the receiving end of the good fortune of that stupid move. Uh, But that's just me personally. I don't know what you want, but... We're trying to save the franchise, and we're back today looking at guys who are actively hoping to join the Sharks. We are going to look back at the season of the Barracuda forwards. Spoiler, there's three guys I've never heard of on this team. I doubt that JD's really ever heard of them either until he did this assignment. You cannot tell me that this first guy, you knew who he was. I call bullshit. But we'll get into it. We'll look at their... We'll look at... um, their seasons. We'll do the same thing we did for the uh, two draft classes where we kind of talk about where we see them going next year uh, and beyond. Uh, yeah, content. Content time. Go content. You're Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Kyle Demetrius. Back with me, as always, is co-host JD, the Carlos Signs to my Charles Leclerc. <laughs> We're never coming. <laughs> you know what that uh, is? The Charles Leclerc? Yeah. Or the, no, I know the Signs guy. Yeah. He's the, uh, he's, he's the guy who's like over in Europe that's never coming over, right? No, Carlos Signs yeah. and Charles Leclerc are the drivers for Ferrari in F1. No. No, no, Who the no, hell no. is Signs? Oh, no, it's Tony Sins or whatever. What's his name? Yeah. Oh, Tony Sund. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man, a Tony Sund appearance in 2022. <laughs> yes. Jeez. Uh, no, Char- Charles Leclerc and uh, Carlos Sainz are um, drivers for uh, Ferrari in F1. Three off, Don't care. Three off there. Uh, I'm, I'm in F1 now. I'm watching yeah. Drive to Survive. I'm halfway through season two. Actually, I'm almost done season two. Um, I figured now that I have to be pretend to be Australian. Uh, you have to get into cars like a room room. The no uh, yeah. of cars. <laughs> they go no, most of them perform quite well uh, no. all the time. Uh, Great. No, Noah Gregor performs quite well in other countries, as we've seen so far. Yeah. Like the <laughs> just uh, like he, has he scored more than just that one goal, though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let, let's quickly, before we get into this, because, I mean, I don't really care. But <laughs> well, we'll record this Sunday night, so he knows. We World can take, yeah. Championship Hockey. Let's see here. Uh... uh IIHF, okay. Norway edges Great Britain in shootout thriller. Interesting. Hmm. Um, point. I want points. Hold on. World Championship Hockey 2022 points. There's... Borderlands did have a nice shorty on the other day. I see, I see Riley Barber. Uh, mm-hmm. sco- scoring leaders. Uh, can you guess who's got the most points? They have six. Uh, I know Blickfeld had a Hattie, so... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. You've never heard of this person. It's Roman Trevenka uh, for the mm. Czech Republic, funnels, followed by Dennis Malgin, who I thought was Russian, but apparently he's Swiss. He's got five points. Matej Matej Blumel of the Czech Republic has four. Marcus Lauritsen of Denmark has four. Joachim Blickfeld's hat trick uh, means that he's fifth. He's, he's only his three points. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Josh Anderson, Matthias Brom. Uh, where's another shark? Timo is seventh in scoring. He's got Three points. Uh, where's Noah? Noah Gregor has two goals. Good for him. Noah he Gilbert. has as many goals as Kent Johnson, who's uh, <laughs> half his age. In, in <laughs> uh, <laughs> other other people with two goals: Calvin Thurkauf, oh. Havel Regenda. Oh, the infamous Matthias Plakta. Uh, oh, and also his his friend Mathis Olim. Ooh. Um, what a crazy name that is. Uh, Rasmus Asplund also has two. Noah Gregor and, and Ken Johnson. Uh, currently being outscored by Jonas Siegenthaler. Um, and a guy named Enzo Corvi. <laughs> Corvi! Man, Enzo Corvi is a sick name. Uh, uh, there's also a Finn named Tony Rajala, which is cool. Oh, there's a German. Leonard, but Leonhard. Foderl. P-F-O-D-E-R-L. Foderl. That's awesome. Okay, but anyway, that's not what we're here for. We are here to talk Kuda. Baby sharks. Actually, a barracuda is not a baby shark at all. 
it's a completely different fish. It is a completely uh, different fish. <laughs> I think barracudas are really big, though, right? I think, yeah, uh, I think so. Big. Yeah. Yeah. That's anyway, fish. Do you like, before we get into this, do you like the barracuda logo? It's fine. I kind of like it, actually. Yeah. Surprisingly. Plot twist. I know. I don't like their the new black, like, jersey where it's like spells kuda like with the vertical it oh, feels like, oh diagonal diagonal font what is this 1994 yeah if and it's like because it's it's just kuda so it feels really small on there yeah yeah so it feels would like, be better because it'd be more like the rangers where it's got yeah type of thing but yeah they went the full like stealth jerseys with the kuda but yeah i mean i, I feel like the kuda they're they're Put a lot of we talked about this the other day. Or they're putting a lot of uh, a lot of effort into the CUDA to be good next, or at least competitive with the new, new, uh, yeah, new building. They're getting the AHL All Star Game here in a couple of years. Yeah. So, but they did play last year. They were bad. They were terrible. Uh, remember, remember, partway through this or close, getting close to the end of the season, people were like, oh, they're on a winning streak. They're going to make the playoffs. We need this guy and this guy. And then they lost fourteen straight games. Close. Fifteen. 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 Hey. Woo! Yeah. Uh, way to be. That's how you want to close out your season with 15 straight losses. Uh, but anyway, we're just going to go through these guys alphabetically and let's fire up the first one because it's absolutely hilarious. Um, yes. And you cannot sit here and look at me and tell me you know who Tyler Bird is. I, I have never heard of this person. I do know who Tyler Bird is. No, uh, you didn't. I I was watching Kuda games at the end of the season to watch uh, our, our Lord and Savior Gushin and La Rock. But Tyler Bird. Uh, so the way we're doing this is we're going to guys who kind of predominantly played on the CUDA or kind of if they played on the Solar Bears, they played some games on the CUDA. That way we can try to cover them as well. Uh, our Tyler Bird here, he played three games with the CUDA, didn't have any points, played on the Orlando Solar Bears. Um, 48 games played this season, 19 goals, 14 assists, 33 points. Not too bad for the ECHL, but yeah, he was called up um, on the Barracuda at the end of the season when they had uh, no people left. Um, so yeah, whatever. Tyler Bird. He, Tyler Bird was actually drafted in round five by Columbus in 2014. Yeah. Uh, what a crazy career. He's going to be 26 just, this summer. So it's like, he's, Oh, he's literally he's, not factoring in anything. This is just hilarious. Um, yeah. He played weird prep school, and then he went to two more different prep schools. Then he played four years in the NCAA at Brown, uh, where he really didn't score any points. Then he played for the Wheeling Nailers, sick. The Reading Royals, uh, or Reading, I should say. Don't get mad at me if you're from Pennsylvania. Then the Greenville Swamp Rabbits, all in 2018-19. are all ECHL teams. Then went to the Solar Bears. Got loaned out to the Syracuse Crunch for five games. Then back to the Solar Bears for a season. Then this past season, Solar Bears. And then more Syracuse crunch loaning and uh, Barracuda loaning. He is uh 100% an ECHL player through and through. Yep. So next on you, Tyler bird <laughs> <laughs> next on the docket. Ah, here's a good one. Yoko Blickfeld. Blickfeld. Long so time, a... long time prospect. Uh, can we consider him a prospect now before we get into his stats? He's kind of getting, uh, long he's getting long in the tooth when it comes to the old prospect. Uh, but I mean, I guess since he still hasn't played a hundred game or two hundred games, it, it's still he's on the edge of being a prospect. And uh, he's twenty three; he'll be turning twenty four in July. This season, he did uh, he played all in the Barracuda. Unlike last year, we actually got a couple uh, a couple games in the, the Sharks in the twenty twenty one season. But this year, all on the Barracuda: sixty one games, twenty four goals, twenty one assists, forty five points. And I don't know what to. do do with Blickfield because I I just don't see him making a, an impact on the Sharks. Uh, I know this was kind of funny. I know plus minus is a garbage set. I'm going to just go ahead and get it out there. Uh, Yoko Blickfield was literally the worst guy in the AHL with a minus 47. He led the he led the Barracuda in points, but also was a minus 47. <laughs> sick. They should put him on the team just for that reason on the Sharks. Ah. Uh, I think he's just your guy who's going to be a solid farmhand in the AHL and just can't he's a, put it yeah. together in the NHL. I, I He's played – I have it up here. Uh, where is he? Last year he had five games in the NHL. Uh, the year before that he had three games in the NHL. So he's played eight NHL games. Has He's got one point. He scored a goal. 
He also killed. He was. Uh, he was. Nathan oh, he killed Nathan McKinnon. He was sick in his last year for Portland. I mean, he had 114 points in 68 games. Uh, and the year before that, he was a point per game guy. And the year before that, he was 58 points in 63 games. So he's got a pedigree where he can score. I just don't know if that's going to translate to the NHL, especially because he's going to be what 25? You said 24. He'll be 24, that's- but it's like he's not going to be the best player on the CUDA next year. Like he's been the best player on the CUDA for the past, you know, at least this year um, you could argue he's the best player on the CUDA. Uh, but that's not going to be the case anymore when you have, I mean, the, the CUDA have also been very talent deprived and I just, I, yeah, I think he's just going to be an AHL guy. Yeah. I, I think, I think, I think next year we see him back in the, a- is he a free agent by any ch- or is he a, uh, a thing? Oh, a uh, RFA. That is, a, I believe. I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. I closed my tab by accident to look at uh, something silly. Uh, Joachim Blickfeld, where are you, homie? Uh, where is he? Oh, he's down here. He is a fr- an RFA. Right. Yep. So, question: Does yep. he get re-signed, or do That's... they just let him out into the universe? I think because you've, I think they'll re-sign him. Um, because you've already spent this much time drafting and I mean, I know he was a seventh round pick, but like you spent this much time developing him. I think you give him one more year, especially if you kind of want the CUDA to be good, he can be a good player on the CUDA. Um, so I, yeah, I think they do resign him. I don't know. I don't know. I, I maybe, it's, a one, it's a, maybe a one year. Just yeah. To, like just no, no, just have one him, year, have him back. But like, yep, yep, yep. honestly, honestly, if he's, not re-signed they're just like yeah we just uh we think you've got all like we just he's not back yeah. I, I wouldn't be shocked to be honest with you um I just yeah yeah if he doesn't resign though he's gonna have to buy potentially a cheaper car <laughs> yes to drive his ass <laughs> to his new team yes and if his car Need some upgrades. Maybe need some parts. Maybe he just wants to change out like the windshield or something like before that for a cross country drive. He can definitely do it at rockauto.com. And we don't know what kind of car Yoakum drives, but with the ever increasing number of makes and models, Canadian Tire, your Princess Auto, whatever. What's the local store in Fresno called? Sure. <laughs> you have a car. You've never you've never fixed your car. My car is a year old. <laughs> oh, well, lucky guy. Yeah. Anyway, whatever your local chain store is. Oh, so I get all my parts from Rock Auto. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, they don't have everything. Sometimes they got to order it in. Maybe they got to get it from a different store. It takes time. Why well, go up to the guy in there and be like, hey, I have uh, a Honda Accord. What model or what year? What trim? Four door, two door, all the dumb questions that you could just pull at your phone, your old pocket computer, and go to rockauto.com and save your time and money because. You don't have to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store. You can spend way less at rockauto.com. And Rock Auto is a family business serving do it yourselfers for over 20 years. We both uh, are proponents of doing it yourself. They have everything you could possibly need brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, new carpet, friend of the show, but windshield wipers, very cheap, like $5 a wiper. I need new windshield wipers. Guess where I'm going? Rockauto.com. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? They know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com. Okay. Moving right along. Yeah. Next guy is Sasha Shemalevsky. So he played majority of his games with the CUDA. Um, He did get a nice extended, uh, with uh running with the sharks at the end of the season last year but um still want to cover him with the barracuda since i think he's going to be a guy who could potentially start the season on the barracuda next year um and then maybe work his way back up as well but in his 47 games with the barracuda he had 12 goals 25 assists for 37 points um he played 19 games with the sharks this year and had eight assists um, last year he had five games with the Sharks and two assists as well. Um, again, another one of those six round picks from the 2017 class where he is, uh, I believe also going to be an RFA this year. Yes. He's also an RFA this year. So they're going to have to sign decide. I think they'll resign him. And I think he, you is, think so? Because he yeah. hasn't really been in that good. 
Yeah, but he he no, the coaching staff liked him at the end of the season. He got, he got a nice run at the end of the season. I think he will be in play for that four C. Really interesting because I think he has no shot. Bees, Shimilevsky, I think so. Yeah, mm, I think he has no shot. I think he's back on the Cuda. I think yeah, def- I think they'll definitely resign him, especially if it's coming down to like him or Blickfield or yeah. John John Leonard. Um, I think he probably has the inside track, but I you really think he's going to make the sharks over like there, there's a lot of guys that are going to be I just said he's, he's in the running. I didn't think he would I didn't say he would. I just, No, sorry. I, okay. So you think yeah. he's in the running even though you just listed off guys that are clearly better than him? You never know. I mean, it's we've seen guy, you know, <laughs> Noah Gregor won the, the position at one point too. So, uh coming out of training camp. So, yeah, uh I I, like I said, I think he's in the running, I don't, but I think he does start the season as on the, the Barracuda, and then he'll probably get called up again at some point. So, um, yeah, I I think, though, it's interesting where Blickfield and him, where, you know, they've been kind of similar points that, you know, Blickfield's definitely produced more, but Shimoleski, I think, has earned the trust of the coaching staffs and the and management to actually get like an extended run with, with the sharks. And he was, uh, he looked solid with the sharks at the end of the year and Logan Couture stole a goal from him. I'll never forget. <laughs> uh, well, Shimon Lesky had a better point per game than uh, Blickfeld last year. Um, yeah. I, I, I just think with the influx of talent and young guys coming in that are going to need time to prove what they're worth to the, the organization. Mm-hmm. I think guys like Shimolevsky's and stuff, you he, they've been around a lot. We're like, oh yeah, Shimlevsky prospect. I think people just need to let go of some of the like. It's yeah. just time to move on from some guys. I don't think they're going to move on from Shimlevsky. No, I but think he's having he's gonna... him in the running for like four C is just. I, I just don't see why uh, when you've got like Scott Reedy there and you've got um, other guys, especially when your fourth line isn't what he does at all. Yeah. Um. I, I and then I don't see how he would make the third line. I I just think he's in a tough spot where. He hasn't been so lights out, same as like a Blickfeld, uh, where he hasn't been so lights out that he forces his way onto the team. Um, but he's not like terrible where you just let him go, but all this new talent is going to pass yeah. him by. Yeah, eventually they're going to pass him by. But I still think having guys who've, like you just don't want all the children running around on the Barracuda. I think having like your Shimlevskis and your Blickfelds who've been there for a while and you know can kind of help uh, help those guys get adjusted isn't the worst thing in the world. So, and then if, you know, when the other guys get passing by, then you just don't resign them. So type of thing, I guess we, you also, yeah. it's a numbers game too. You're running out of spots for, for people. And the more you, keep- Tyler bird, <laughs> <laughs> Tyler bird will be nowhere near the AHL next year. Uh, I, it, yeah. I just think when it, if it comes down to it and Shimolevsky taking time away from uh, a Brandon co, then you're doing yourself a disservice because Shimolevsky again is 23. It's not, old but he's been in the system for a million years now so yeah no i think next uh, next year is kind of it for shimlowski though so That's moving right. on zachary gallant speaking of guys that uh should not be taking time over <laughs> other people no uh yeah zachary gallant so last year he played 53 games three goals 10 assists for a nice point two five points per game He's again kind of one of those whatever guys right now. I, I career a, AHLer. I don't think here we really need to spend a lot of time on on him to be honest. So weirdly, yeah. only his second season with San Jose uh, Barracuda. I feel like this is a guy that's just always been on the Cuda. Um, again, he's twenty three, but this is definitely a guy that like this is the the classic guy that it, if he's a FA, uh, where is he? It's not even on here. Oh, Zach Gallant. He's an FA. Why would you resign him? Yeah. You know, you've got a bunch of guys coming in. So, yep, yep, yep. Sorry, Gallant. Sorry, buddy. Thanks for your service. Yep. Uh, uh, Justin Gareffa, he, a small boy, uh, spent a lot of time with, again, with the, the polar bears this year. You mean he the solar had, bears? It'd be solar. sick if they were the Orlando polar bears. The solar bears. Uh, yes. Um, sorry, I'm gonna do 20 things at once here. Uh, he, yeah, didn't do much, didn't do anything with the CUDA. Uh, 11 games, zero goals, zero assists. Uh, so nice. Uh, even zero points per game uh, last year. But, uh, small boy who the Sharks uh, signed a couple years ago, 
Uh, but again, he's been playing with the uh, the Solar Bears. Um, 38 games, 9 goals, 13 assists, 22 points for them. And then also played with the Tulsa Oilers in 9 games. Had 7 goals, 7 assists, 14 points. Um, and then had 9 points in the playoffs for the Tulsa Oilers as well in the ECHL. So um, dude can shoot. But yeah, again, small boy. Too, too much incoming talent. Yeah. Back at me. Back to the ECHL you go. <laughs> back to the ECHL for you. Uh next, I'll find one. Jaden Hubbox. So uh Hubbox, 59 games played, 17 goals, 24 assists, a very nice 0.69 points per game. Um, also played a little bit with the Sharks this year. Uh, where he, why take forever to pull him up? He had, I think he played like three games. Let me pull that up with the sharks right now. Um, he, yeah, three games had one assist. Uh, didn't look lost on the sharks at all, but um, again, so he's he's also older, he's 20, just turned 25. Um, so it might be another one of those things where you're Again, it hasn't really progressed. Like he had 35 points in 64 games and he had 35 points in 55 games and he had 11 and 25. And then this year at 41 and 59. So he, he went up a little bit, but like, I, he's probably not going to get much better than this. And, and this isn't good enough to be on the sharks at this point. Yeah. And he, he's, he's all speed. And again, you have Noah Gregor who does the exact same thing. So, and uh, yeah, I would just rather play Noah Gregor at this point. So, uh, Hobgovax is actually a UFA. Um, so yeah, they did not accrue the required games by the age of 25. If they just let him walk, I think that's fine. Uh, especially yep. if you're re-signing Shimlevsky and Blickfeld and those guys to be the leaders, I think it's totally fine to let, let somebody like Hobgovax go. Who's older than them as well. Yep. So, but before we continue, got to take a little snack break. And of course, there's only one snack that we reach for. That's Bill Bars. Bill Bars right now have an amazing new product, a birthday cake puffs. Imagine dipping your finger into a plastic tub of birthday cake frosting, then opening your eyes and realizing that there was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. That's what it's like to really eat a birthday cake puff from Bill Bar. If you haven't tried the puffs, I'll let you know a little secret because that's what friends do. And we are friends here at Locked on Sharks. Chocolate covered marshmallow protein bar. Yeah, you heard me. Delicious. Flavored marshmallow covered in 100% chocolate. Make every day your birthday with Bilt's Birthday Cake Puffs. Bilt is taking the delicious experience of biting into a fresh slice of birthday cake, uh, covered it in 100% chocolate, and added sprinkles with 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, and only 9 grams of sugar. This limited time flavor is an amazing option if you're looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety in your day. So head to Bilt.com, get your birthday cake puffs now, and use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% of your order again. Use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. That didn't do the little caption. Sorry, guys. Oh, well. Oh, well. Sucks to suck. Yep. Next. Dylan oh. Hamlick. Oh. oh, remember when they, I think they traded up for this guy. Uh, oh, God. This, is, uh, this, this traffic is not working out for the Sharks. No. So he was a second round pick in the 2019 draft class, 55th overall. Um, this year, first season in the pros, uh, 44 games, three goals, six assists, nine points. Yeah, I, I never just... got the I never got the choice at the time uh, when he was drafted in um, 2000. When was he drafted? Uh, uh, 2019. 20. Yeah. He was coming off a 26 point in 31 game season. I think he had a knee injury. And I was like, okay, well, maybe. Um, not and he's the just... best. And then he had 31 points in 56 games, 13 and 16, which is better. Nine and I, I, I don't know. I don't know what they say. And he was playing like fourth line minutes for the, the CUDA at the end of the season and stuff. It's just, yep. Sorry. But he's, he's, he's still under contract uh, yep. until the end of 2024. So it's not like he's going anywhere, but they, I think with this guy, you really got to see some progress. Next yeah, I, 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 I honestly don't think he just. I don't think he plays in the NHL at this rate. Yeah. So, at, at this rate, which is yep. which is totally fair assessment. Yep. Next, Timor Argamov. One goal, one assist, and twenty three games played. Oh. Point zero nine 
uh, points. Timur Ibragamov is such a cool name, too. It is a cool name. So, um, he, yeah. So, 0. 0.09 points per game again. So, he's 21. Uh, he doesn't turn 22 till uh, October. Big boys, very big, good sized boys. Six foot, uh, 201. But, um, played. Yeah, has his, he's had one goal so far in his, his time in North America. Uh, for Scott St. Petersburg, he like an MHL, he had like back in 2019, 2020, um, he had f- uh, five goals in seven points in seven games in the MHL. Um, he played on TPS last year uh, in the 2020, 21 season, um, had eight goals and 14 points in 51 games. Doesn't yeah. seem like a goal. Doesn't seem like an offensive guy. Uh, no, he's under contract next year, so he'll he'll be back unless he wants a weird release to Russia. But um, was he the guy that played good defense? Sure. <laughs> I don't know. We'll we'll ask somebody. But um, right now he's just a guy. Yep, just a guy. So not just a guy. John he's Leonard. He's going to be a free agent. Just a guy. Yeah. So Johnny Leonard. Um, had a very slow start to his season this year, but really cranked it up at the the last, uh, the kind of the second half of the season was actually the AHL player of the week. One of the weeks um, he had uh, in 45 games, he had 17 goals, 15 assists and 32 points played on the Sharks, played 14 games uh, this year. We had one goal, one assist and two points. I uh, got hurt at the end of the season uh, with a blocking a shot with a knee injury. You know, I we, we talked about him before where it feels like he's one of those guys where it takes a little bit for him to kind of get into it. Like he needs a couple games to kind of get into it. Um, but yeah, the, the Sharks are going to have to kind of make a decision with him. As you said, he's, you know, not he's an RFA. So um, I assume they will resign him because I think he's the one that goes. Mm. Well, ideally, I don't think you can have all of these guys back. So ideally, I think I would let Blickfeld go. Yeah. Um. Well, Halbgavox too, but yes. um, out of Blickfeld, uh, Shimolevsky, Leonard, I, I would let Blickfeld go personally. Yeah. But I feel like Leonard might be the odd man out. It's very yeah. He's yeah. He'll be twenty four in August. Um. So yeah, it's yeah. He was a goal scorer. Yeah. UMass. He had that twenty seven goals in thirty three games in nineteen twenty before he jumped over to the Sharks, but. You know, yeah, he hasn't really found this scoring touch until the last half of this season and then in, in the AHL. And then he, you know, blocks a shot and hurts his knee. And so, <sighs> tough. He, yeah, it, it seemed like his his minutes, he, when he got called up, he was, he he got some minutes, but it quickly went away. Again, same as last, the end of last season where he, yeah. he just, his role dwindled and dwindled and dwindled. Um, and I just don't know if the Sharks view him as somebody they would rather have than a Bordalo or an Eklund um, or a Co. And obviously like a, a Veal who plays a different role, but he's still going to get time. I, I just don't yeah. know. I just don't know if they resign it. It's just an easy person to let go, even though I think that he would be more valuable going forward, but it just seems like his role has diminished every year. Um, yep. And the slow starts don't help. The slow starts don't help. I mean, but he was a 0. 0.71 points per game, so he's better than... Yeah, he, yeah, he really he, he got it going in the second half of the season. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think they resigned him just because of what they saw in the second half of the season. So, oh, hopefully, he, I think yeah. he gets. A, I think I think he deserves another shot, but yep. um, I, I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I would be shocked. I would be kind of shocked if, if Shimolevsky didn't get resigned, but I I wouldn't be shocked if John Leonard was it. Yep, Jake McGrew, fifty-seven Speaking games, of random one. people. Yes. <laughs> 12 goals, 11 assists, 0. 0.4 uh, points per game. Uh, he's a little bit older, so he is uh, 20. He just turned 23, actually. Sorry. Um, from Orange County, too. Good for you, buddy. Uh, Six round pick from the 2017 draft class. It feels like they're all just late round picks. So yep. um, he played a little bit of, he had three games at the uh, Orlando Solar Bears this year as well, where he had three goals, three assists, and six points in that time. Um, yeah, I, I just think he's just going to be a career AHL guy. So, yeah, he was never lights out scoring in, in uh, yeah, his the minors season. either. 
he had 31 goals uh, with the with Spokane. Um, his 1819 season, and but it was games. still, it was still like, yeah, and it, it, I don't think he had a ton of assists either. I think he probably topped it at like 54 points, something like that. So, yep. just just a guy, um, maybe a veteran, a, more of a veteran guy in the CUDA, but eh, they've got a lot of those right now. Yep, <laughs> Antoine Morant, uh, the Sharks acquired him at the trade deadline because they needed uh, warm bodies to play on the CUDA. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think he is going to be part of the Sharks going. Or <laughs> he's he's an RFA. Just don't resign him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he just turned twenty three. Uh, he was wow. He was a second round pick by the Ducks in twenty seventeen. Um, yeah, he played with the Syracuse in the Syracuse Crunch. He played forty four games for them. Had four goals, six assists, ten points, and then the fourteen games with the Cuda, fourteen goals, one. Uh, 14 games, sorry, one goal, three assists. So we we can just breathe. Yeah, past. he's yeah. Au revoir, Antoine Monet. Yeah. Steen. Passionate. Speaking of breezing past people. Yeah. Uh, I know the uh, he was signed to the Sharks to get Brinson. It was a package deal, uh, and then I know Brinson was like basically out a lot of the year too. And I think Steen. Um, I guess Dean only he kind of bounced between the AHL and the ECHL. Um, with the Cuda this year, he had 24 games, one goal for one point. And with the Solar Bears, he had 16 uh, games played, four goals, two assists, six uh, points total. So again, uh, whatever. Steen, Steen Pashnuk is also 27. Yes. So um, and uh, at the NCAA, he had a career total of 11, 19, 21 points in like. Like a hundred and something games. Yeah. Um, moving on. So yeah, they had to sign him to get his brother, who they really wanted anyway. Adam Raska, noted pest. Uh, so he got he played a couple games with the Sharks as well this year, uh, but spent the majority of his time with the Cuda. So he played forty nine games with the Cuda, five goals, nine assists, fourteen points. Also five games with the Sharks and. Uh, have any points but not a not a points based player uh, no he is your uh I'm your pain just... in the ass based player yeah yes that's what he does so yeah kind of uh, kind of a log jam for him though because jeffrey veal is on the team <laughs> the, yes uh, jeffrey veal and, and yeah, i mean so. like gajoyevich also kind of plays that like bigger annoying guy role uh so a couple guys in front of him but I, I, he's the classic yep. hangs out in your team and then eventually plays like half a season for you Yep, and yeah, he's still under contract for a while because he was part of the 2020 uh, draft class. Uh, so yeah, he is under contract through the 23-24 season. So he'll be. Um, do you yep. think he gets any more games next year on the Sharks? Yep. Uh, yeah. If they uh, like, say Veal gets hurt or um, Gadjevich is out, like, there's always going to be room for a guy like this, especially when you see coaches like Bob. Uh, depending on the who the coach is next year, but I mean, a guy like Bob. Um, he's always going to want uh, a guy like this in the lineup for better or for worse. So, yeah, to punch. Um, so I, I'm going to go like this. <laughs> if I score a goal, it's your own fault. <laughs> All right, Ty, I'm just going to bite the air like this. Um, yeah, I think there's always going to be room for a, a guy like this. Uh, so I, I think he probably gets a couple more games unless Veal, Veal, like unless all of their enforcer guys go away, then he can get a lot of games. But he's going to be your classic, hey, we need a tough guy call up. Yep. Kyle Topping. The existence of a Kyle Topping uh, leads them to believe that there's a Kyle Bottoming as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, Kyle Topping, he uh, four, 48 games, four goals, 15 assists, 0.4 points per game. Um, also, I think, did he spend some time with, uh, yeah, he also played with the Solar Bears as well. He had 10 games, two goals, 10 assists, 12 points in that time. Uh, he was a free. They signed him. If he was a free agent signing from uh, the Kelowna Rockets, uh, where he he was basically a point per game player in his last three seasons. 33, yeah. 33, 69, 68, and sixty five. Actually, he was dead on a point per game player in his last three seasons. Good for uh, him. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think if I remember right, I think it was a knee injury or something like that. Kind of messed with him if I remember. But um, he's only 22, doesn't turn 23 till, um, until November. So 
uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's. I don't. I think he's only a bear. He's only a, a barracuda contract. He's not actually with a shark like an, as an NHL deal. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if he's still hanging around with the Cuda next season. So, yeah, I mean, a classic AHL guy. Yep. And oh. then last, Evan Wine. Guy who I feel like has been on the team for literally ever. <laughs> he, they built the team around him. <laughs> yeah, the whole team is built built of Evan Wangers. <laughs> yes. Uh, so he, I always screw up spelling his name because the EI and then the NG thing, I always get them all mixed up. Um, he had 12 goals, 12 assists, 24 points in 60 games with the Barracuda this year. Uh, last year split his time with, uh, with the COVID season with Liga and the Barracuda where he also had, he had eight points, uh, with 28 games for the, the Barracuda. But yeah, he's been on the Barracuda since the 2018-19 season. Uh, he's just turned 25. Just please let him be free. <laughs> yeah. We he's... don't, with the influx. So this is my big thing. And, and Langer's a, pers- a perfect person to, to to bring this point up again. With all of the guys coming in, your Coes, your Gushins, your, oh, well, Bordelow's probably not, but maybe Bordelow. Um, who else is coming? Uh, Cardwell. Uh, Robbins, Weisblatt, all of these guys are coming in. You That's like make... two lines of dudes right there that you just added. That was like, like seven pound. or eight guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't you don't have to fill up with the Wangers and stuff. And if it comes down to it, where some of these guys get called up or some of these guys get hurt and you need bodies, an Evan Wanger is always available somewhere. Yep. They're always available. Uh, you can find them, even from the ECHL. Go find them other places. Sign one. They're going to be around. Mm-hmm. You don't need to... We're at a different point in the Sharks for the last like decade plus. They haven't had a ton of prospects because they trade them away. They trade away their draft picks. Um, they're picking kind of late. Consistent. They're yeah, type of thing. Exactly. Whereas okay. now you and, have this. T- yeah, you notice all the guys that we talked about was like you know Sasha Bookfield. They're like sixth and seventh round picks, like just hanging around. Like next year, we're going to talk about a first round pick, a second round pick, a third round pick, a fourth round pick, another yeah, first multiple round pick, second round. Yeah, There's, like you're having a lot of dudes coming in. So yeah, and, and so you don't have to fill up your team with your Evan Weingers and your uh, Joachim Blickfelds and, and these guys, Jaden Hobgavox, who are in that like 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, like yep. Steve Pasternak is 27 years old. He shouldn't be anywhere near this team. Um, you've got a lot of guys that are going to need time and need development, and you don't need a lot of these guys to come back. And if you need one, you can find one. They're eminently yep. available. It's not like you're trying to find Brent Burns. You're trying to find Evan Weinger. It's just He's going to have... He's going to make money playing a game he loves either here in Europe or ECHL. So it's fine. But like the development of the Sharks, they need to focus on integrating all of those guys and, and don't worry so much about having these guys fill out the team or because they've been with the team and just have a few Sashes and Leonards to. Yeah. Those guys have them. had their chance. If they haven't made it by now, it's not like one more season for Sasha is going to make or break if he's going to be an NHL player or something like that. Like Exactly. But he could be a good leader of the the even Good leader of men. yes leader of children yeah so <laughs> um yeah barracuda tyler bird funniest thing i've seen i'm glad we led with tyler bird mm. uh if you are passionate about the barracuda and have cuda thoughts or if you know if timor ibergamov plays defense please let us know on twitter <laughs> facebook and instagram uh, at locked on sharks youtube locked on sharks close to 800 possibly over 800 by the time you hear this uh, hopefully hopefully email locked on sharks at gmail.com uh, Amazon, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast, Locked on Sharks. JD, my fry hole. Kyle at Kyle Demetrius. The way you spell words that are spelled that way. <laughs> Haven't done that one in a while. No. Uh, thank you guys for making us your first San Jose Sharks listen. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with something that we're going to cook up with. Um, or go check out some of the other podcasts, such as the Locked On NHL, especially with the playoffs rolling along. I can't believe that thing happened last night. Can you believe that, Kyle? Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. They'll be showing that for the rest of our lives. Or go check out one of the other amazing podcasts, such as Locked On White Sox. Bye, friends. A White Sox is different than a...